Welcome guys. Today I'm going to talk about whether Cardano is better than Ethereum 2.0 or not. What's up YouTube community? My name is Syed and welcome to Invest Desk, your number one channel for cryptocurrency investing, regular updates, news and forecasts. And we are going to take a look at if Cardano is better than Ethereum 2.0 or not. So first things first, before I talk about the differences and why or if not cardano is better than ethereum let's get the record straight number one the majority of my portfolio is mainly dogecoin bitcoin ethereum cardano chilies to name a few that doesn't mean that all these coins are going to make it or not so of course 99 percent you know already fail because you take on risk when you choose to invest based on your own portfolio number two of course, you know that I'm not a financial advisor, so ultimately I would not know what the price would do tomorrow, but I do my regular research and I've been doing this for many, many years. I have a degree in finance and of course a PhD as well. With that out of the way, let's dive in and check it out whether Cardano is better than Ethereum 2.0 or not. So make sure you watch till the end of the video to really find out. So Cardano and Ethereum are both smart contract platforms. So there cannot be any doubt by the way, that Ethereum is certainly the king of smart contract and decentralized apps world. It has powerhouse decentralized applications such as Uniswap, Maker, Aave, and Curve Finance, and that's just to name a few. Their ecosystem is pretty huge, and stable coins such as USDT or USDC have made Ethereum their home as Ethereum's massive user base is the envy of all its challengers because everything is built on top of Ethereum. Needless to say that Ethereum is really, really powerful. So let's not let the current size of Ethereum network, you know, blur our vision. So in this game, cryptocurrency game, right? Size matters. And Ethereum really boasts a large developer community base, even bigger than Bitcoin. And all these developers are dedicated to really strengthening Ethereum as the future of finance. And of course, with the Ethereum 2 upgrades coming up, and I'm going to talking about those changes as well. But let's not forget Cardano, creator, by the way, Charles Hoskinson, who is also a co-founder of Ethereum. And I'm sure he's learned from Ethereum's mistakes and the shortcomings and is building something better and stronger. So here, the clear advantage is that Cardano offers staking support for, let's say, small balances, which really is an advantage for a layman person, everyday person wanting to have a place in the world's finance. But with Ethereum, for example, you would need a minimum of, say, 32 ETH to stake, which will price many out of the earning potentials of staking. And we know that a large stake behaves just like a guarantee so that only serious participants get to validate the system. The larger the stake, the bigger the commitment. Decentralized staking pools are rolling out so that will make staking accessible to everyone. And time, of course, is indeed running out for Ethereum because unless they come up with ETH 2.0, which is in the process, and there's some exciting news already regarding Ethereum. And that news is that Ethereum Berlin upgrade announcement just a few days ago. And this is really where Berlin is now ready to be deployed. And they're moving pretty fast. The first testnet to upgrade by the way that was Robston is scheduled to upgrade in march on march 10th mainnet is scheduled for april 14th so we still have a month or so pretty much where we will see this particular upgrade and with that we're also hoping that the prices or of ethereum will definitely skyrocket it will cross 2000 and that is being forecasted of course and that is being speculated and the technical analysis also show the same and this Berlin upgrade, by the way, introduces some very, very important uh, EIPs to the Ethereum network. For example, EIP 2565, which is the mod EXP gas cost itself, and then the type transaction envelope, and then the optional access list. So all of these are essential upgrades. On Cardano's side, there's a proposed, of course, programming language that they're working on, which will let everyone create a smart contract even if they do not have a programming background so they're making things easier and on top of that gas fees of course it's cost effective to transact in cardano as compared to ethereum so all of this could potentially onboard much more 
you know, talent to the project and result in creation of new and exciting applications previously, you know, we didn't think about them previously. So the reality is that definitely Cardano is also a smart contract platform, but as compared to Ethereum, it's still a baby. But since the founder is coming out of Ethereum, he knows what he's doing. He's taking a look at all the shortcomings of Ethereum and then implementing or developing Cardano accordingly. Charles Hoskinson has the foresight to know what problems would eventually occur for Ethereum and simply decided to go off and build a blockchain in a way that would simply minimize the impact of those foreseeable issues. And we also know that Cardano is a groundbreaking proof of stake blockchain network. And this is simply developed into a decentralized application or called ADAP development platform with a multi-asset ledger. And you can verify those smart contracts. And of course, Cardano aims to achieve the scalability, interoperability, and sustainability at the same time that is required for real-world applications. So basically, Cardano is designed to be the platform of choice for large-scale mission-critical dApps that will underpin the economy of the future. And Cardano has been the subject of, of course, many headlines recently. The price also went up. Recently, we saw that as it has launched its latest phase of implementation. And by the way, did you know that ADA Cardano is often called the Ethereum killer, right? But here we're taking a look at whether Cardano is better than Ethereum 2.0. And that would determine, of course, the price, the forecast moving forward in time. So key elements of Cardano and Ethereum, I already highlighted some of the important ones. But really taking a look at a little bit deeper in understanding what really is Cardano and how it relates to Ethereum. But just like Ethereum, Cardano is also a blockchain project that specializes in smart contract technology. And the overall purpose of Cardano is to find the perfect balance between servicing the needs of its users alongside that of regulators. So basically the team is, feels that this is important because eventually they think that cryptocurrency is going to be regulated in the same way as the financial services industry. And that is a very, very key and huge difference and a visionary thought moving forward. People like Cardano coin because it is supported by a team of academic leaders, researchers, scientists who really help each other develop the blockchain. And unlike lots of other projects which often decide to fork the original code of a different blockchain, the ADA Cardano team, by the way, is building their protocol from scratch. So basically, they're going to get off of the Ethereum base. And they use a programming language that supports the blockchain, and that's called Haskell. And by the way, a fork simply refers to the action of simply copying the code from an existing blockchain and making changes to make it better. As an example, think of this as Bitcoin Cash, which forked the original Bitcoin client. And with Ethereum, of course, after several years in development, Ethereum 2.0 is, by the way, now more you know, closer than ever before. So in terms of performance, Ethereum, of course, firstly, when we use Ethereum blockchain to send funds to another use, each transaction normally takes about 16 seconds or so. And this is quite fast, especially when you compare it to the traditional payment systems. Now, it doesn't matter if you're sending funds to someone located in the same town as you are or someone located in a different country across the globe. The transaction time is always the same. When it comes to the transaction fees, this all depends on how busy the network is. So for example, during the first few years, transactions would cost only a few cents, but as it become more popular, the fees have increased. When Ethereum experienced the busiest period, by the way, and this was probably back in 2018, the transaction fees were costing as much as four or five dollars. But of course, they vary, right? Depending on the how busy the network is. A further issue with the current Ethereum blockchain is that it also very limited to number of transactions it can process at one time. And of course, we know what's it called. This is called the scalability. And it is based on how well the network handles large amounts of activity. As far as Cardano is concerned, before I talk more about Cardano, I thought I'd make it clear that Cardano is still in its very early days of sort of development, right? The team claims that they're building one of the fastest, cheapest, and the most scalable blockchains in the world. But definitely that will take time to build a product. And the ultimate goal for Cardano is to be able to offer near instant and free transactions, allowing users to send and receive funds, create smart contracts, and of course, build 
decentralized apps as well. And not only that, it is hoped that once the product is fully functional, it will be able to scale to unlimited transactions. And of course, regarding consensus, which is how our transactions verified in Ethereum, for example, I mentioned how both these blockchains are decentralized earlier. This means that the transactions are verified without the need of any third party. So the blockchain use a consensus mechanism, which basically determines how the blockchain reaches the consensus. In other words, think of this as how we can trust that transaction is valid or not. And every blockchain achieves this differently. With Ethereum, uses a consensus mechanism called proof of work, which is the same model as Bitcoin uses. To verify a transaction, the system simply generates a random sum that is so complex, no human could solve it. Instead, you need computational power. So using this proof of work model also, of course, limits the number of transactions that can be verified. And that is why really Ethereum team, the developers team is looking to upgrade to a new consensus mechanism called proof of stake. And Cardano also uses, by the way, a variation of proof of stake, which is called the Ouroboros. This protocol uh, reaches consensus in a different manner to Ethereum's proof of work model. So basically, instead of getting miners to solve complex mathematical sums, proof of stake uses forgers, right? The difference here is that instead of a machine solving complex, you know, mathematical computations or sums, the successful forger is selected randomly by a cryptographic algorithm and staking is where you transfer basically your coins to a special wallet where they're you know kept and then used to verify transactions on the network so the more cardano coins that you stake the greater chances you have of winning the reward it's just simple as that and according to cardano roadmap of course future development plans also include building quantum resistant addresses on-chain voting and off-chain payments as well and we also know that Cardano has now been added to the Bloomberg Terminal, which is a platform used by professional traders. So the peer review blockchain project is currently in the midst of a phased upgrade. And Cardano has not only been added to the Bloomberg Terminal, which is a platform, as I mentioned earlier, by used by professional traders, in a move that could expose this currency to a new wave of potential investors. So Cardano, we know that is a peer reviewed blockchain, with its native currency called ADA. Despite the news, Cardano's native cryptocurrency is following the broader crypto's market downtrend, of course, falling almost 5% in the last 24 hours, for example, and 9.5% in the last seven days. But since the start of 2021 and moving forward, ADA has seen high levels of growth, opening the year at 18 cents, but currently sitting at a little over a dollar. And ADA, by the way, ranks fifth by market capitalization among the cryptocurrencies with a total of about 32 billion and since cardano is still evolving right within its roadmap it's organized basically to five eras right byron shelley gojian basho and voltaire so in addition cardano has been you know seen investments from likes like fd7 ventures they recently set aside about 250 million dollars to fund companies but with ethereum on the other hand ethereum 2.0 more specifically which basically is a set of interconnected upgrades that will make Ethereum more scalable, more secure, and more sustainable. And these upgrades are being built by multiple teams, you know, developers working on it. The size, of course, which is development team size is bigger than even, you know, Bitcoins. So across the Ethereum ecosystem. And that really is the vision of Ethereum moving forward with the Ethereum 2.0 upgrades. And these ETH2 upgrades is a set of upgrades that improve like I mentioned earlier, scalability, security, you know, denial of service attacks, protection from those, and sustainability of Ethereum itself. And ETH 2.0 is not a migration for a single thing. It basically describes a set of upgrades being worked on to unlock Ethereum true potential. But why was there a need for ETH 2.0 anyways, right? So Ethereum we use today needs to offer a better experience, of course, to the end users and the network people on the network itself. And these upgrades will help Ethereum, perhaps the most obvious issue that Ethereum needs to be able to handle more than, let's say, 15 to 45 transactions per second, but with ETH2 upgrades. It also addresses some other issues with Ethereum today as well. So in conclusion, we saw that Cardano and Ethereum are both in terms of development in the development category, right? With ETH 2.0 coming up and, of course, Cardano. But the Cardano versus Ethereum is not so much of a discussion is really a difficult one to have at this point because one cryptocurrency is already established right 
It's number two, it's a giant, but with the second largest market cap. And the other is still, of course, developing its product. And of course, always difficult to predict to know what impact Cardano will have if Ethereum's planned upgrades are successful. So if Ethereum can process thousands of transactions per second, as well as increase its speed, scalability, security, then other smart contract platforms like Cardano might quickly become irrelevant. I'd like to take your views on Cardano and your views on Ethereum and your views, of course, whether Cardano is better than Ethereum or not. So make sure you put them in the comments below. And if you like this content, if you like this video, smash the like button. And of course, subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want the latest news, updates, forecasts, because this Invest Desk channel is the channel for you bringing you this latest updates. So there you have it, guys. Is Cardano better than Ethereum 2.0 or not? What do you think? Put in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know after taking a look at this video, which one is actually better. Is it going to be Ethereum in the long run or Cardano in the long run? But certainly my personal opinion moving forward with the Ethereum 2.0 upgrades, I think it, Ethereum, of course, is in a better position. So there you have it. Is Cardano better than Ethereum 2.0? Well, let me know. And with this, I will see you in the next video.